Imagine for a moment that your mind is a ship and your thoughts are its crew. When everything is calm and peaceful, the ship sails smoothly. But when turbulent thoughts storm in, the ship begins to rock, threatening to capsize. Many of us find ourselves in this tempest, our minds besieged by relentless waves of intrusive thoughts and self-doubt, leaving us adrift in a sea of dissatisfaction. Now, what if I told you that this ceaseless quest for happiness and contentment might be the very thing fueling the storm? What if the secret to gaining control of your ship and setting the right course is not in the constant striving, but in the art of letting go? Intriguing, isn't it? This is what we call the backwards law, a counterintuitive principle that promises to steer us towards the shores of fulfillment and inner peace. The concept of the backwards law. Alan Watts, a British philosopher and writer, first introduced the backwards law in one of his profound discourses. It's a paradoxical concept that perfectly encapsulates the irony of human desire. He suggested, the harder we try, the more we push away what we want. The more we seek contentment, the less satisfied we become. This paradox applies remarkably well to our endless pursuit of happiness. We chase happiness as if it's a destination, a point on a map to reach. We set goals, make plans, and accumulate stuff, hoping that they will bring us the contentment we crave. Yet, dissatisfaction looms around the corner, waiting to strike. Why? Because in our quest for perpetual happiness, we tend to amplify our dissatisfaction. Each accomplishment or possession merely raises the bar, creating a new set of desires and discontent. It's a never-ending cycle, a constant chase that leaves us perpetually unsatisfied and always yearning for more. Moreover, happiness is not a constant state, but a series of momentary experiences. In our relentless pursuit of it, we often overlook moments of joy hidden in the mundane, thus fostering disappointment. So, the counterintuitive secret to happiness, according to the Backwards Law, is to stop striving for it. Instead, focus on the present, celebrate the small wins, find joy in the ordinary, and contentment will naturally follow. It's about letting go of our preconceived notions of happiness and allowing life to unfold organically. In letting go, we gain control, and in losing ourselves to the present, we find enduring contentment. True Desires Our society tends to equate success with tangible accomplishments, wealth, fame, power. But are these what we truly desire? We yearn for these tangible achievements, believing they will bring us the contentment we seek. However, we often find that they fail to satisfy our deeper, true desires, peace, love, and genuine happiness. These intangible desires, though harder to quantify, are what we truly yearn for, and their fulfillment leads to lasting contentment. These deeper desires, however, can often elude our understanding. Here, Alan Watts, a renowned philosopher and interpreter of Eastern philosophy for Western audiences, provides a potent insight. He posits, why don't you really know what you want? Two reasons. Number one, you already have it. Number two, you don't know yourself because you never can. What suggests that our true desires are inherent to our being? They already exist within us. Just as a fish remains unaware of the water it swims in, we too can overlook what's inherently a part of us. Instead, we pursue external achievements, failing to realize that true contentment comes from within. The second part of Watts's proposition is even more profound. It suggests that the self, in essence, is an ever-evolving dynamic entity. Our wants and needs evolve as we grow, learn, and experience life. Therefore, the quest to know oneself is a perpetual journey, not a destination. By understanding Watts's perspective, 
we can start to untangle the complex web of our desires. It invites us to shift our focus from the external to the internal, from the tangible to the intangible, and from the ephemeral to the enduring. In doing so, we can begin to realize that what we truly desire is already within us, waiting to be acknowledged and embraced. Nature of happiness and desires. As we delve into the exploration of our desires, we might find it fitting to ask ourselves, what truly drives us? Desires often serve as our guiding force, compelling us to seek and attain that which we perceive to bring us happiness. Yet, not all desires are created equal. Consider the superficial desires, the yearning for materialistic possessions, social status, or physical attractiveness. These are the wishes we often chase, influenced by societal standards or external factors. They can provide temporary satisfaction, but can they bring a lasting sense of fulfillment? Do they reflect the core of who we are, or are they merely reflections of societal norms and expectations? Consider the superficial desires, the yearning for materialistic possessions, social status, or physical attractiveness. These are the wishes we often chase, influenced by societal standards or external factors. They can provide temporary satisfaction, but can they bring a lasting sense of fulfillment? Do they reflect the core of who we are, or are they merely reflections of societal norms and expectations? Conversely, let's ponder on the deep-rooted desires, those that resonate with our innermost values and beliefs. These are the aspirations that emerge from the depths of our being, reflecting our authentic selves. They might be intangible, like the desire for authentic connection, personal growth, or contributing to the well-being of others. These are the desires that, when realized, bring a sense of deep satisfaction and lasting joy. But are these the desires that we actively pursue in our daily lives? This contemplation leads us to the dichotomy between transient and enduring desires. Transient desires, much like superficial desires, are sparked by external influences and provide fleeting satisfaction. They are like the bright bursts of fireworks that dazzle momentarily, but ultimately fade into the darkness. In contrast, enduring desires resonate with our core values, reflecting our true selves. They are akin to the steady glow of a candle, providing a persistent, warming light. These desires have the potential to guide us towards a meaningful, fulfilling life. Now let's turn the lens on a widely held belief that happiness is a direct result of external achievements. Many of us operate under the assumption that a well-paid job, a fancy car, or a picturesque home equates to happiness. This societal narrative is as pervasive as it is deceptive. It's like trying to capture sunlight in a bottle. The gleam may shine brightly at first, but soon it begins to fade, leaving us yearning for more. This brings us to another misconception, the idea that once attained, happiness is ours to keep, a permanent fixture in our lives. Unfortunately, happiness doesn't work like a one-time achievement in a video game. It's not a level up that remains with us indefinitely. If we equate happiness to a sunny day, we must acknowledge that even the sunniest of days can be followed by a storm. Happiness, much like the weather, is ephemeral and fluctuating. Now let's contrast this fleeting happiness with a deeper, sustained contentment. Imagine happiness as a sugar rush. It's intense, it's euphoric, but it's momentary. On the other hand, contentment is like a balanced diet, providing us with constant energy and vitality. It comes from an inner peace, a satisfaction with one's self and one's life. It's not about chasing the highs, but about cultivating a steady state of well-being. To delve deeper into this paradox, the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, 
but how you react to it that matters. This profound insight suggests that it's our perception and reaction to events, not the events themselves, that determine our state of contentment. Life will invariably present us with challenges, but the way we interpret and respond to these challenges significantly impacts our emotional well-being. Similarly, Alan Watts, a well-known British philosopher, introduced the concept of the backwards law. According to Watts, the desire for a positive experience is itself a negative experience, and paradoxically, the acceptance of a negative experience is a positive experience. This paradoxical idea suggests that the more we chase happiness, the more elusive it becomes. On the flip side, when we cease the relentless pursuit and accept our current circumstances, we open the door to contentment. Even Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds in history, recognized this conundrum stating, a calm and modest life brings more happiness than the pursuit of success combined with constant restlessness. This emphasizes the importance of finding peace in the present moment and letting go of the incessant need for external validation and success. To these philosophers, the pursuit of happiness was less about acquiring and achieving and more about understanding and accepting, dissatisfaction and striving. In this incessant rat race of life, we often find ourselves stuck in a never-ending cycle of dissatisfaction and striving. We're perpetually in pursuit of something better, something more, constantly yearning for the next promotion, the next pay raise, or the next accolade that we believe will bring us the ultimate happiness we desire. But does it truly? Or are we unknowingly imprisoning ourselves in an endless loop of wanting more and more, never truly finding contentment? Consider the words of Greek philosopher Socrates. He who is not contented with what he has would not be contented with what he would like to have. This timeless wisdom sheds light on the folly of our constant striving. Despite achieving our goals, we may still find ourselves feeling discontented, always eyeing the next milestone. This is the paradox of ambition. The more we achieve, the more we want, leading to a perpetual state of dissatisfaction. Contrast this with the teachings of Buddha who once said, contentment is the greatest wealth. The idea here is not to suppress ambition, but to find contentment in our present state while we continue to strive for our goals. It's about appreciating what we have while working towards what we want. This shift in mindset can break the cycle of dissatisfaction and striving, leading to a more fulfilled life. However, this is easier said than done. Our ambition often blinds us pushing us to endlessly strive. It's important to remember, as philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once pointed out, he who would learn to fly one day must first learn to stand and walk and run and climb and dance. One cannot fly into flying. Every step of the journey is crucial and every achievement, no matter how small, is significant. By acknowledging and appreciating our progress, we can find joy in the journey and not just the destination, thereby escaping the vicious cycle of dissatisfaction and striving. The human will to live. Let's delve even deeper into the fascinating realm of philosophy, specifically exploring the profound teachings of the renowned 19th century philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer. He introduced the thought-provoking concept of the will to live, a primal force that propels us in our day-to-day -day lives, often operating beneath our conscious awareness. Schopenhauer's will to live encapsulates the visceral and powerful human instinct to not only survive, but also thrive and fulfill our deepest desires. Now you might wonder, how does the will to live relate to suffering? In the constant struggle for survival and the fulfillment of desires, the will to live drives us to strive relentlessly, even in the face of adversity. 
This striving, however, can often lead to suffering, as the satisfaction we seek is transient and unfulfilled desires often result in disappointment and discontentment. This paints a rather grim picture, doesn't it? But please bear with me here, as there is a silver lining to this understanding. This realization doesn't mean that we are inevitably destined to endure eternal suffering. In fact, it is precisely by comprehending this concept that we can take a significant step towards finding inner peace and contentment. The concept of the will to live sheds profound light on our inherent dissatisfaction, delving deep into the paradox of seeking fulfillment within an unending cycle of desire. It encapsulates the essence of human nature where we incessantly yearn for more even as we achieve our goals. By exploring Schopenhauer's concept, we gain a profound understanding of why our accomplishments often fail to bring lasting contentment. This awareness serves as the key to breaking free from the cycle of perpetual longing. In the words of the wise Socrates, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Understanding the will to live and its implications empowers us to redirect our focus, enabling us to appreciate the beauty of our journey and the significance of the present moment. It encourages us to pursue our aspirations without becoming entrapped in the never-ending cycle of desire and the consequent disappointment it brings. By delving deeper into the will to live, we gain invaluable insights into the human condition, unraveling the complexities of our desires and the pursuit of happiness. It is through this understanding that we can embrace a more mindful approach to life, finding contentment in the present while striving for personal growth. Acceptance as a path to contentment. A radical shift in perspective proposes a profound and transformative approach, embracing acceptance as the cornerstone of contentment. Rather than tirelessly pursuing fulfillment, we have the opportunity to find solace and joy in the present moment, accepting our current reality and recognizing the inherent beauty within its imperfections. This alternative mindset does not advocate for complacency or surrendering to stagnation. Instead, it encourages us to truly appreciate the intricate nuances of our journey, savoring each step along the way, and recognizing that the destination is not the sole measure of our success or happiness. By delving deeper into this philosophy, we can unlock a profound sense of fulfillment and discover newfound richness in our lives. This brings us back to Alan Watts's concept of the backwards law, the idea that the more you pursue feeling better all the time, the less satisfied you become. By accepting our present state, we cease to perpetually strive for something more, something better. The backwards law proposes that it is the pursuit itself that breeds discontentment. Hence, acceptance paves the path to satisfaction and contentment as we learn to find joy in what we have right now. Philosopher Lao Tzu eloquently encapsulates this perspective. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Lao Tzu's words resonate powerfully with our proposed approach of acceptance. Instead of ruminating over what we lack, we should strive to appreciate what we already possess. It is through this profound understanding and acceptance that we can find true contentment, shaping a life that is not dictated by incessant want, but enriched by mindful appreciation. Conclusion. As we draw close to the end of our exploration of the backwards law, it's crucial to revisit the principal themes that underpin this paradigm shift. Central to this philosophy is the notion that the relentless pursuit of happiness paradoxically leads to dissatisfaction. In a world where we're constantly bombarded with messages about acquiring more, achieving more, and being more, the backwards law 
serves as a countercultural beacon, illuminating a path where acceptance and appreciation reign supreme. Our journey underscored the importance of valuing the present, savoring what we have right now, instead of yearning for an elusive ideal. This acceptance brings with it a deep sense of contentment, as beautifully articulated by Lao Tzu. Our quests for improvement can often blind us to the beauty that exists in our present circumstances. By shifting our perspective, we unlock a profound sense of fulfillment and peace. And so, we conclude with a reflective pause on the potential that lies within the act of letting go. Picture holding onto a rope, the fibers cutting into your hand as you cling relentlessly, afraid to release your grip. The backwards law suggests that it's only by loosening this grip, by letting go, that we can truly understand the power of acceptance and the fulfillment it can bring. As we free ourselves from the constant need for more, we open up space for contentment to bloom. So perhaps the secret to getting what you truly want is after all, by letting go. Could it be that the power to shape a fulfilling life lies not in relentless pursuit, but in heartfelt acceptance? This is the intriguing proposal of the backwards law, which invites us to redefine our approach to happiness and fulfillment. 